guys, I'm so glad you're here and I'm thrilled to be sharing with you some awesome clay projects that don't require kiln fire. Just because you don't have access to a kiln doesn't mean you cannot give your students the same awesome experience of working with clay. Today I'm going to share with you three different kinds of clay that you can use in your art room that don't require kiln fire. The first one, I'll be exploring air dry clay. Now when it comes to air dry clay, there are a lot of different air dry clays on the market. So my strongest recommendation for you would be to find one that's both economical and one that you have tried and tested first. A lot of them feel a lot like actual clay, but it would be good for you to troubleshoot anything that you think your students might have problems with. The other kind of clay we're going to be using today is something called cellu clay. I love cellu clay because it's great for working on bigger clay projects with your students. And lastly, I'm going to share with you how to make some homemade clay. This is probably the most economical clay that you could bring into your art room using simple supplies like flour and salt. Now there is an allergy alert there, so you will want to check and make sure that your students are not allergic to gluten. Now, I'm about to dive right in with eight projects that you can take right back to your art room even if you don't have a kiln. These are the supplies I use when I'm working with air dry clays. The great thing is is that when you're working with air dry clay you're going to use the same terminology and supplies you would use with kiln fire clay which is great because it will give your students a very similar experience. I like to use dog dishes. I pick these up at the dollar store. The reason I like to use these is because they don't spill and you don't need a lot of water to create your slip. The other thing I like to use are old toothbrushes again available at the dollar store. This is my tool of choice when it comes to slipping and scoring. A lot easier to use and an easier concept for students to grasp. Another thing I like to have on hand is a skewer stick. They do make them in shorter sizes or you could simply cut them and sand it down. Longer sticks I always find to be a little bit more dangerous to use with students. I also like to have a lot of textures on hand and I'm about to show you a bunch of projects where you'll be utilizing textures for clay projects and of course your air dry clay. If every student had a piece of air dry clay that could fit in the palm of their hand there are a bunch of projects they can make. Some of the textures that I like to have my students use are things like doily, burlap, placemats and I just have them laid out flat on their clay mat and then just pound it out making sure it's as thick as a cookie and even all the way across. Not even going to lie, it's going to be extremely loud in your room for a couple of minutes, but the kids are going to have a blast. I always tell them to make sure that the clay is like a smooth surface, no mountains or valleys, and it should also be about as thick as a cookie. The magic happens when the kids reveal the texture that they've created underneath. This is where the real oohs and ahs happen, and this is why I love using different textures with the clay. With that beautiful textured piece, go ahead and put a template on the clay and trace around it with a skewer stick. This is a project that I did with the faculty and staff at my school called My Heart Has Wings. With the extra clay, simply roll it into a ball, and once that's complete, then it can be flattened and cut in half. That becomes the wings. By the way, if air dry clay ever starts to crack, simply rub water on it as you would kiln fire clay. Cut it in half and then decorate the wings as you like. A lot of teachers and staff cut them into different shapes, out of different patterns. It's really up to the artist. Our theme was is that we are teachers who teach from our heart and give our students wings, but that kind of theme could lend itself to a lot of projects with your students as well. It's a fun one. Just give this clay about a couple of days in front of a fan to dry completely before painting. An alternative to using a template and a skewer stick would be to use a cookie cutter. This is a fun project that I've done with my second grade students where I have 30 minute art classes. Simply use the cookie cutter to punch out the desired shape. Once that's complete, the extra clay can then be used to form a coil. The coils are then used to create the initial or the initials of the student. I have big ideas for this project. I think it'd be a fun collaborative where the kids could spell out the letters of the school or perhaps a school mantra would be a lot of fun. When rolling coils, it's important to show students to roll all the way up and down to get a good coil. Simply bend the clay to the letter and don't forget to use the toothbrush. The toothbrush is what works as the glue to keep this together. Once complete, add a couple of holes to the top so that it can be hung. 
Let's talk tacos. Another alternative to do with that textured piece of clay is to make a clay taco. My kindergarten students absolutely loved this project. Once the textured piece was complete and folded into a tortilla shape, then we used our garlic press purchased at the dollar store to make the cheese best thing ever. Highly worth the investment. Once the cheese is complete, then we brainstormed all sorts of different delicious delectables that we could put in our taco. Lettuce, tomato, the meat, the hot sauce, and even some sour cream. When attaching these, it's important that your students toothbrush to really make sure everything adheres. Nobody wants their stuff falling out of their taco. Dry, dip these in light brown paint for a complete coverage of the taco shell and let the kids add the other colors. Extra Turtles was another hit with my kindergarten all the way up to my second grade students. Have the kids put the clay on the floor, keeping it on the mat, and step on it. Once finished, flip that clay over and have three small pieces of clay. And what I'm doing here is rolling coils, one too small, one too long, and that way the kids can kind of understand that they need to get three coils that are the right length and all equal in size. Once that's finished, again, use that toothbrush and you're going to place these on here, creating an X. Once those are done, don't forget to press that clay down and really make sure it sticks. Then you can add the other part, flip it over, and voila, you've got a turtle. Don't forget to add two little eyes and a mouth with your skewer stick. These can also be painted once dry with watercolor paint to really showcase that cool shell. Now, if you want to use clay that allows your students to create larger clay projects, usually based on an armature, I really enjoy working with what's called cellu clay. Cellu clay is a paper pulp clay. It comes in a very small pack or a larger five pound. For um, a class of my second grade students, I went through, I believe, one entire bag. So it, a little goes a long way. It does expand quite a bit. This is a kind of clay you would want to prepare before your students arrive because it's very dusty. And what I like to do is after I pull it apart, I just put it in a bowl and then I gently, so as not to kick up a bunch of dust, I gently kind of massage it, we'll say, down so that it becomes very, um, just kind of breaks up the lumps a little bit and easier for me to mix. And when I do it at school, I do use a large bowl and I mix a pretty good quantity. And then what I do is I keep it in um, plastic wrap. I just wrap it as tightly as I can in a plastic wrap and you can keep it in the fridge. That way it doesn't get moldy if you're gonna keep it over the weekend or get a little bit funky. But I have found that just keeping it wrapped up really tightly makes it so that even a day or so later, the students and I can still use it. So once you've gotten it broken up, then you just start pouring in the water. There are measurements on the package, but I'm not that kind of cook. You see, I just kinda eyeball it and go by feel. So I'm just gonna gently add a little bit of water and then mix it up and see how that feels. I find that mixing the cellu clay in small batches really helps. And as you're doing it, you'll need to make sure to kind of massage that around just because sometimes there can be little pockets of dried clay. It should have the touch and feel as regular clay. And you can see it pretty much cleans itself, although it's going to make your hands feel a little bit sticky when you're working with them. When working with cellular clay, I like to have my students build an armature that they cover with the cellular clay. One project we did this year with my second grade students was we made hearts inspired by the artist Jim Dine. So I gave each one of my students a sheet of aluminum foil and together we talked about how to shape this into a heart. So you can see it already has a crease here. Bend it up. Bend it up on the other side, making a letter V with your hands and gently bringing in your hands like you're making heart. I like to have my students take a piece of the cellu clay and it feels like very sticky clay. Roll it into a ball, squish it flat and add it and it'll stick. As it dries, cellu clay adheres to aluminum foil, it adheres to plastic 
and to cardboard. So it works great on a bunch of different surfaces. So when my kids were doing this, you don't have to use the slip and score method. The clay is very sticky. And as they were overlapping the pieces, I just had them gently smooth it on. When working with the clay, I have my students keep their projects in a bowl that has their name on it. Also, the great thing about clay is you don't have to wrap it up in between working on it like regular clay, and you can also work back into it, meaning if the cellu clay is dry and you add wet cellu clay, it'll still adhere so you can continue working on it as long as needed. Here's a fun project for your older students. Start with the base for your trophy head of your animal or dinosaur or dragon. Go ahead and use your aluminum foil, scrunch it in half, and fold it, thus creating the mouth of your creature. Bend it inward just a little bit. To get the head to stick to the base, what you're going to do is use the cell you clay by overlapping it. You're going to use it to anchor the head to the base. The great thing about the cell you clay is it's just damp enough to get it to stick, but it does not warp the cardboard. That part is what I'm doing first, going right through the center of the mouth to anchor the head to the base. Once the head was secured to the base by having the clay go through the center of the mouth, then I started working on the base itself using just pieces of clay, one blob at a time, overlapping the two pieces just like I demonstrated with the heart. The great thing is, like I said, if your students don't finish this project, no need to wrap it up. Simply put it on a shelf. They can work back into it even if the clay is dry using new clay. Now, of course, other parts and pieces could be added with aluminum foil, perhaps ears or a different shape of the head, or you can use the clay that way. It can be shaped and formed like clay. It does take a while for something like this to dry, but if something like this is placed in front of a fan or a dry area, it would really only take a day or maybe even two. I like to use acrylic paint when I'm painting my clay creations. It has a really great effect if you paint it one color and then go back over it with a darker wash. It gives it kind of an antiqued look, which I think would be a lot of fun for something like a dragon, a dinosaur, or an animal head creature. The possibilities for this one are endless. I could see middle school kids really enjoying this experience. Probably the cheapest alternative to kiln fire clay is making your own salt dough clay. Two cups of flour, one half cup salt, three quarters cup of water. That would probably be enough for about four to five students if you were giving them a palm sized piece of clay. Now when you start doing this, you're going to think my recipe is bonkers because this is super sticky, but then it's like magic. All of a sudden, all the pieces of the clay start to come together. I would of course do this well in advance, just like the cellu clay, wrap it up in plastic so that you have enough for your students and you don't have to stress doing this while you're teaching. Salt dough sunflowers is a fun project to do with this clay. Start with either a styrofoam bowl or a bowl covered in plastic. That way it's easy to remove your creation when complete. Taking small pieces of clay, simply roll them into balls and flatten them. Once the parameter is finished, then take a larger piece of clay that's flattened and place it in the middle. This clay is so sticky that you don't need to use the slip and score method. And here I am just adding a little bit of a decoration and pizzazz to my sunflower, which I will paint with acrylic or temper paint. Either works great, as does watercolor. Textures can also be introduced to this kind of clay. The thing is, is that this clay does expand, so detailed textures will not show up, but the shoe press method definitely will. Have your students squish with their shoes four pieces of clay overlapping the two and then overlapping the four to create the base of a butterfly. Again, this kind of clay does not require a slip and score method because it's so sticky. You might wanna have your students use a skewer stick to draw designs like a face into the uh, butterfly or even add a couple of dots so that it can be hung once complete. That was a whole mess of clay projects and a whole lot of fun. I hope there was something that you feel like you can take back to your students, even if you don't have a kiln. And if you do have a kiln, just so you know, those air dry clay projects that I shared, as well as the homemade clay projects, those can also be done with kiln fired clay. So there's something for everyone. I hope you guys have a fabulous conference. It was so fun sharing some of my favorite clay projects with you that don't require a kiln. Bye guys.